Regular programming will not be seen tonight, so we can bring you an ABC News 4 special, Saving Our Children, the Obesity Epidemic. The current generation of kids is the least active ever. Today, more than 23 million children and teens are overweight or obese. Soda and potato chips and hamburgers the size of your head. By the time many of our nation's youth reach the age that they could enlist, they will simply put be too fat to fight. Clearly, the kids that we're seeing today are much more sedentary. This is an epidemic now in the United States. Obesity. Childhood obesity. Obese kids. Obese. Obesity. Obese. Obese. Obesity. Childhood obesity. When we talk about obesity in this nation, there is so much shame. We show you bellies, bulges, and backsides, but rarely do we show you a face. Why the embarrassment? It's no secret. More than two-thirds of American adults are overweight or obese, and we're teaching our children to live the same way. Hello, everybody. I'm ABC News 4's Victoria Hansen. Tonight, we put a face in obesity, specifically childhood obesity. In the next half hour, we introduce you to kids and teens struggling with weight, and we explore what we as adults can do to help. It's an ABC News 4 special report, Saving Our Children, the Obesity Epidemic. A five-year-old should not weigh what a 14-year-old would weigh. I just stayed in and watch TV all day, didn't go outside or anything. So that's when I gained all my weight. Someone actually told me I'm too fat to live, so I should kill myself. I had gotten so used to it, I didn't care at that point. Emotional eating. I ate because of my emotions and I wasn't hungry. She is sweet 16, but hardly a teenager. Life has always been a challenge. Um, when I was born, I died and came back to life and had two heart attacks back to back and five minutes apart. Her parents named her Miracle. Yeah, I died and came back to life. I know, I'm not supposed to be here, but it's a reason why I'm here. That reason quickly became clear as Miracle found herself weighed down with responsibility at a very young age. I'm still like kind of a mom. Miracle's mother became ill. She was left to care for her nephews, brother and father. I don't try to let everything out because I gotta be strong for everybody. But being strong for everyone else meant Miracle did not care for herself. Her health was what caused me to stress, which caused me to eat. Miracle stuffed her feelings with food and soothed the suffering she felt for her mom. She was very sick. She was losing her hair. She couldn't get out of bed. Sometimes I had to help her get out of bed. I had to help my mom wash up. But it was her mother's diabetes, cancer, kidney, and heart problems that also forced Miracle to confront her own health. She was overweight. She may have been smiling on the outside, but inside, she was worn out. I go to all her doctor's appointments, and I started knowing, like, being that the doctors give us information, I started like looking at my life differently, so I wanted to change it. <laughs> so Miracle did something she had never done before. She started exercising and eating better. Four, five. She joined Louie's Kids Fit Club, One. a local nonprofit for overweight children. Good job. I like to hear the moaning. <sighs> the physical and mental weight began to melt. I'm not gonna lie, sometimes I make excuses because I don't wanna push myself too hard, but in the way if I don't push myself, who's gonna push me? No breaks here, girlfriend. Miracle's learning to lift others. No. Awesome. She must build the strength she needs from within. Ashlyn Conway has always had the comfort of family. I don't really know how to put into words how, I, how much I appreciate them. But the 12 year old has never been comfortable in her own skin. In the beginning of the year, I would always wear a jacket because I hated people seeing my, like, I hated people seeing my arms and stuff. Ashlyn has struggled with weight her entire life, but becoming a teenager made it worse. 
she just didn't fit. It was hard because I would have to go in the women's section to get clothes and I couldn't go in the kids section because I couldn't fit anything. And the bullies were beyond cruel. Someone actually told me I'm too fat to live, so I should kill myself. Oh yeah, I got a, I got a little bit of a temper, and there's times I want to go and wrap some heads sometimes. But as adults, you have to just, you can't go do anything about it. Mom and Dad did not know what to do. It's hard because you want to do what you can for your child. It was a school nurse who stepped in. At first, I was kind of embarrassed and upset because no one's ever confronted me about it, except like my doctor. Then she thought about it. I kind of felt happy because someone actually wanted to help. Ready? The nurse introduced her to a whole new world, Louie's Kids, a place where other overweight teens were getting in shape, a place she fit. When she came home and gave me the application for Louie's Kids, and she was real excited about it, so we just kind of said, okay, if you're gonna do this, this is, we'll be, we're behind you. The recipe for success was followed at home. Looking at all the sugars that is in what we used to eat, you just kind of drop your jaws and like, I can't believe I used to eat that. Dad gave up Dr. Pepper. Meals were no longer on the road. Just watching her grow and watching her come out of her shell through this, I think it's just brought us closer together. Your butt down. Same as squat position. <laughs> Ashlyn not only lost weight. I joined Fit Club in the first few weeks. I wanted to give up. She lost the negative voices pounding inside her head. Ten jump squat. I just thought it was too hard. I was putting myself down. I was telling myself, I can't do this. I'm always going to be overweight. Let's go. Each pound lost filled her with confidence. When I first started sixth grade, someone would make fun of me, and I would just like, I would just keep thinking about it throughout the whole day, maybe the whole week. But now I just kind of let it slide off my shoulders. Ashlyn's pride in her accomplishments has freed her <laughs> to be herself. I just want her to be Ashlyn, mm -hmm. the loving, caring person that she's always been. Jay Seabrook has watched his weight go up and down. I mainly gained a lot of weight in my opinion. I lost the bulk of my weight while I was in middle school. He struggled with the loss of his mother at the age of 10, only to be crushed again. My grandma, she's the person who raised me since I was a little kid. And a few years ago, she had a stroke. The 19-year-old tried to take his life in stride but admits weight got the best of him. I had gotten so used to it, I didn't care at that point. When are you, when are you, where are you working this weekend? Then he met Chris. When I first met him, what he did was he buried himself in food and books. Chris turned Jay's love of the library into exercise. At that point in time, it was just getting from A to B, any type of goals that we could do to get him out exercising and get an excuse to get off the couch. While I was exercising, I started figuring out how out of shape I was. It's one thing to actually see that you're out of shape. It's another, it's another thing to actually feel that you're out of shape. At first, we started walking, and that would wear him out, and then we started running together. I wanted to stop almost immediately after starting. Um, my legs started hurting, my shoulders, just everything. You come here before you work tomorrow? But Jay pushed through the pain. By the time we were done, we ended up running the bridge run, and then he ended up being on the football, baseball, and soccer team that year, his senior year. This was Jay before he went off to college. He scored nearly 1,500 on his SAT. To watch someone grow like that who's had it so much more difficult than I've ever imagined having it is, is pretty amazing to watch. But Jay had a setback. He gained all the weight he had lost his freshman year. I think it was just a large amount of laziness and just distractions. But he's not giving up. He's at it again, trying to accept the losses in his life. It still gives me problems sometimes, I admit. And change what he can. Yeah, there, there is no quick fix. The only, the only fix is the you fixing yourself. Where you find Rayshon Brown and his Just Do It t-shirt, you'll find his mom not far behind. She really helped me uh -huh. a lot. That's what I like to see.
Together, they're doing what Rayshon admits he did not do for some time. I just stayed in and watched TV all day, didn't go outside or anything. So that's when I gained all my weight. This shy, soft-spoken eighth grader gives it his all. I wasn't really sure about doing this, but now I feel better. And feeling better is what it's all about. A nurse saw Rayshon struggling with his weight and with kids at school. One of the things they say is just that you're fat, stuff like that. She recommended Louie's Kids Fit Club. So you can face either direction. Where children who should move naturally learn how. I'm lighter. I can run faster. And he knows more about how to best fuel his body. Don't eat a lot of junk food. Um, look at the nutrition labels. Yeah. Rayshawn now guzzles water instead of soda, and his weight has dropped. It was hard. Uh, pretty hard. But it's worth it. He's committed. On this day, Rayshawn is the only kid to show. So first butt kicks. As for mom. Well, she can run faster. So even when it's really early and easy to sleep in, Ray Sean is eager to get outside. Two, three. Where he knows the sky's the limit. Still to come, meet the nurse who helped Ashlyn and Ray Sean face their weight. And a mother desperate to help her five-year-old who already weighs as much as a teenager. But first, we weigh in with some numbers on childhood obesity. If you think it's hard to lose weight as an adult, remember what it was like to be a child. Food choices, they're often made for you, and it's hard to say no to those sweets and treats. That's why experts say we as adults can play an important role. Yeah. Carmen Richardson came into the world six weeks too soon. She was four pounds, 15 ounces, so she was tiny. I mean, she could fit in your hands. But as she grew, she's always had chubby little cheeks. Her mother's worries did too. Finally around maybe like two, three, that's when I finally seen that she was, she was starting to gain weight. The chubby cheeked baby with big eyes and curls was quickly outgrowing her princess gowns. Mother Ashley hoped doctors would explain. Every time we would go, I knew she was getting bigger and we'd look at the scales and you know, they're kind of like, whoa, but they would never say anything. Yeah, this is a growth curve. So she sought help from childhood obesity specialist, Dr. Deborah Bowlby. So this is a five-year-old whose weight <coughs> is at the weight that a typical 14-year-old would be at. Can you get on up? There, there you go. I'll help you. Carmen is now five and the size of a 14-year-old. I knew because me and Carmen oh, weigh almost right. the same thing. But what mom did not know is how confusing that extra weight can be for her daughter's developing right. body. So, puberty. Normally we don't, have, well, I'm just a, I'm asking yeah. you. Normally girls don't have a lot of puberty before age eight. Like, what if her body thinks that it's, it's time? What are we gonna do? She's five. Yeah, let's just take a look. So far, no signs of puberty, but Carmen does have trouble breathing. There's something called obstructive sleep apnea, where children, they're sleeping at night and they just, they cannot breathe and they can sometimes stop breathing. Okay, but then we've got to poke yours real quick. <laughs> you can hold it real tight right. if you want. Another concern? Good Thank job. You. My biggest fear was that she would have diabetes. It's a huge fear because I have it. So, um, I'll just tell you we got the good news. Today we do not have diabetes. I was very relieved, terrified at the same time because there's obviously something wrong. There's lots of things that we can do. That something wrong for mom is unfortunately all too common for Dr. Bowlby. Some of the cases that we see are children who are not just 10, 20, 30 pounds overweight, but you know, 100 pounds overweight. And we may see a four-year-old who is so overweight that their legs have started to bow and that they need to have surgery. For this fidgety five-year-old, more tests, 
for mom, a closer look at behavior. She was starting to sneak food too. So um, I could tell she was starting to do that because I'd find wrappers in her room and stuff. Ashley now knows this is not something her daughter will simply outgrow. She needs help. She can't ride the little bikes that the kids are riding or she can't get in a swing by herself. She has to have somebody help her. Her little girl is now bigger than her big brother. I have to buy her adult clothes and get them hemmed or buy capris for her pants. And socially, she says, Carmen's having trouble fitting in. But it's her little girl's health that is always in the back of her mind. Ashley was diagnosed with diabetes when she was 10, and she's recently gotten some bad news. I found out that I have stage four renal kidney failure. So that's another obstacle we are facing. But she says they'll face it together as a family, the same way they'll confront Carmen's obesity, helping her find the right pieces for a long, healthy life. Her door is decorated with love, reminding Corlin Brown every day why she's here. One of those kids um, reminded me probably of some of the experiences that I have had. Nurse Brown, as the kids call her, has a keen, caring eye. She sees the students at Zucker Middle School as her own. She had everything and the making of a wonderful young woman that she could be. She is Ashlyn Conway. In the way I was walking, I guess, she kind of noticed that I probably needed help. And because she was had such a low self-esteem, I remember those days that I had. Nurse Brown was once overweight. She lost 80 pounds. Sometimes people are very, very cruel. I was just really upset and confused and I didn't, I didn't really know what to do. I just took her under my wings and began to share with her that, you know, you are only who you are based on what you feel the best that you can do on the inside of you. Nurse Brown got to know the Conway family and got Ashlyn losing weight. She did the same for Rayshawn Brown. I knew she was trying to help me. Y'all ready? One, two. And she likes to get the parents involved. You know, our children want to make our parents happy. They feel good when their parents are happy about what they're doing. Ooh. Nurse Brown speaking, may I help you? But not all parents appreciate her help. They see it as sometimes making them not look like a good mom or look good dad. And it's usually not that at all. It's just my taking extra time and going an extra mile. And she knows kids who come to see her are not always sick. Sometimes this is a only place that they can go maybe and get some really kind words to stated to them or some love. Her love for what she does keeps her going. If I can do that for a child so that child can be a better child or uh, feel better about themselves, then I've done what I think I'm placed on earth to do. That's why her decorated door is always open. From about Five years old on, I was a heavy kid. If there's anyone who knows about obesity, it's Brian Ganey. He grew from an overweight child into a morbidly obese adult. So I had all the problems as a heavy kid that, that you read about. The teasing, the bullying, the taunting, the being made fun of, the horrible self-esteem, the depression, all of that. By high school, he was 300 pounds. Of course, now we, we have uh, overweight children on a much larger scale, and that's sad. He tried a crash diet in his 20s and lost 240 pounds, but it didn't last. He gained back even more. He documented his journey. It was humiliating and depressing, so I gave up. I just decided that I would be overweight the rest of my life, and there was nothing I could do about it. Brian topped nearly 600 pounds when his weight crushed his health and threatened his life. My condition was unacceptable and I intended to do something about it. He decided then no more quick fixes, just diet and exercise. He lost 300 pounds. Uh, I measured them, they were, I think it's a 74 inch waist. But here they are. Today, four years later, he's down almost 400 pounds. It, it breaks my heart to see it sometimes when I see a child in the grocery store. And I don't, it, it's not that I think badly of the parent or think badly, certainly not badly of the child. 
It's just that they don't have the information. That's why Bride has written a book and visits schools. And what it was was blood clots in my lungs. His goal, to stop the cycle of negativity and shame. The problem with being a heavy kid is you already feel like a social outcast. They, they have to stop making overweight children feel shame at their condition. They're just simply kids that weigh too much. That's all. And he says eating, as strange as it seems, should be emphasized. The fact of the matter is somebody's overweight, they might not be eating enough. The problem is they're eating the wrong things. He doesn't blame parents individually. I don't blame my parents for anything. I mean, that's just a waste of time. But collectively, he says, we are responsible. I think we are dealing with the problem incorrectly because our children are a creation of us. The, the, our children eat what we buy them. Our children do what we do. And he believes it's our obligation to do something to save our children. I was an adult, I could make that choice, but when you see a small child, it just tears your heart out. When we come back, meet the man behind Louie's kids. Big people will have big babies, and big babies will grow into big people. But first, think childhood obesity does not affect you? We weigh in once again. Welcome back, everybody. If you haven't heard about Louie's kids, you're about to. And if you have, get ready to know much more about the man behind it. He isn't overweight, he doesn't have children, but he has made it his mission to help kids be themselves. Louie is my father, and um, he was affectionately known as Big Louie. This is us on vacation when I was a little kid. If you want to know Louis Juhas, ask about his father. He was a powerful presence in his life. You get a pretty good idea for how big he was. He was at, he was at least 500 pounds then. It didn't make life easy for Louis as a kid, but he was never ashamed of his dad. This was a guy that went to work every single day for close to 50 years. Uh, if I learned anything about work ethic, it came from my father. Lewis worked hard himself to lose weight as a child. He was motivated by his father's size. I watched my dad be bullied by adults for his size. And it was his dad's death that later motivated his life. I think it was when he had a stroke. Uh, when he was lifted by a crane through the window of our home uh, in order to get, you know, to the ambulance. Um, and that was humiliating enough. And the nurses are actually arguing on the other side of the curtain, who's going to take the fat guy in curtain two? His life was more meaningful than how he had been treated those last few months of his life. That he just deserved more dignity. Lewis decided then he would pass on that dignity to others struggling with weight. I have a lot of compassion for what they must be feeling inside. You ready to warm up, guys? Right. If I catch you walk in this lap, you owe me 20 burpees. He founded Louis Kids, a place where overweight children could feel accepted. Being overweight is still like the last acceptable um, prejudice. Lewis challenges the kids. Reach all the way back. There is a trainer. The workouts are free. Wow, this is a lot of kids, huh? Sadly, though, there are days when no one shows. I used to think that it was enough to try and empower these kids. Um, I think the approach now is to, to empower parents. Lewis says he has helped 500 kids lose 5,000 pounds since Lewis kids began 13 years ago. We've got thousands of letters. His commitment reflected in all the letters that he has kept. This is a letter from an eighth grader, and he weighs 350 pounds. He's only 5'8". I can no longer ride amusement park rides. I can't fit on them. To hear some kid tell you that they can't 
get in an amusement park ride um, or they can't fit in an airplane seat. I mean, these would be issues that my dad would have talked about when he was, you know, when he was in his 50s. But, you know, this is a, you know, this is a 12-year-old kid. Sadness is the thing that they ha all have in common. They're, you know, they're not really living a childhood. It's the kind of sadness Lewis felt with his father, a man often ostracized for his size. A lot of folks, if they didn't know him, would have never given him a chance. But a man not forgotten through Louis' kids. Certainly was a way to acknowledge that he was here and that he mattered. And I think that that is what's important to me with some of the kids that we work with, is that they are here, they're not silent, they do matter. <laughs> they too, he says, should not be overlooked. And if denied a chance, perhaps we are the ones who have a lot to lose. You may, in fact, end up missing someone pretty special. We want to thank the children and teens who are brave enough to share their struggles and the adults who lead by example. Saving our children from this obesity epidemic isn't easy. It takes dedication, persistence, and a lot of hard work. And we want to thank you for taking the time to listen tonight and to hopefully share the message. Good night, everybody.